Hi guys and welcome to my review of the KZ Krilla. This is the latest from KZ, a OnePlus One with tuning switches as well. Although these tuning switches uh, mainly affect just the base level. Uh, more or less the same thing that happened already with the with the DFI. Anyway, this is the box. I'm not even going to bother with the, uh, do the unboxing or anything of the sort. We already know what what is the usual um, packaging from KZ. Uh, and again, uh, I mean, at, at this price point, below twenty dollars, we're not gonna uh, be expecting anything major. Anyway, that's the, the little box that it brings. Very typical KZ. As for the IEMs themselves, they basically kind of uh, follow that design philosophy of the DFI. Although we have here a plastic resin shell, let's say, with the, the metal faceplate, and then the actual uh, BA let's see if I can show it to you it's not an easy one to show the actual sorry about that the actual BA sits in the nozzle uh, not not easy to show you trust me it sits there in the nozzle you can just you can just make it if you look carefully at the end of the nozzle you can just about if you just, if you pay close attention there, you can see it sitting over there in the actual nozzle, okay? Anyway, I'm using KB Ear 07 tips as usual. Uh, in this case, I'm using the the Cyan, the blue ones, which are the ones that actually uh, uh, allow for the best fit possible. I've got all the switches in the, in the full on position. That again is uh, the position which I found is the, the, the best and most, the one that makes the most sense. And uh, finally, I'm using a, a copper uh, four core cable from XINHS. Um, in terms of the fit, the Krilla fits perfectly, no issues. I mean, majority of IEMs from KZ are never really a problem in that aspect. It fits perfectly, not a problem. Uh, with these tips, it stays put beautifully as well. So, can't, uh, can't fault it, that's as simple as that. Um, so what is this whole mess that I've got here? Well, it's simple. I thought it uh, would make sense to basically compare the Krilla with the other OnePlus ones which are priced at around the same sort of value. Uh, and what that means then is that I have here the KB Ear Pecker. Well, we'll leave it at that, the KB Ear Pecker. 20 odd, uh, 20, anywhere between 25 and $30. So. Quite a bit more expensive than that. The Tiorin ST1 Pro, uh, around $18, $19, also a OnePlus One. And on the right hand corner here, uh, a new IEM from CVJ, um, which I will touch upon it, obviously, of course, but will go into more detail when I review it by itself. Okay. Following these IEMs, or, or on the, the second and third line of these IEMs, are the, you could say, the, the single DDs that probably are the originators of uh, these OnePlus Ones. In the case of KB Air, it's, it's the Rose Finch over there. In the case of the ST1 Pro, it's the TRN uh, MT1 Pro. Uh, and then, and actually, well, the, actually, the MT1 Max. This one is actually should be the other way around. Sorry about that. So there we go. It should be like this. So the MT1 Max is, let's say, the the one that uh, serves as a precursor for the OnePlus One ST1 Pro. And then before that one, we had the ST uh, the MT1 Pro uh, for KZ. There's a whole bunch of them, but uh, I left it just to the most recent ones and obviously the DFI with its switches and the DFI without the switches. Uh, I could have added as well the ZFX, but that's it. It, is, it is what it is. And then for CVJ, the TXS and the KES are the two that probably serve as the basis for the OnePlus One, which, be called, which will be called NAMI. Okay. Um, what can I say about then the, the KZ and then I'll give some comparisons. 
the KZ straight away what jumps to you is it's it's highly detailed. You you notice straight away there's a BAD. There's no uh, there's no attempts by uh, um, uh, by KZ to to uh, make the BA unknown or or blend the BA in in a perfect manner. No, they are uh, they are. Uh, uh, they are, have tuned the, the krill in a way where the BA is very noticeable. Uh, the BA is being used in the uh, nozzle, which ideally is never the best position. However, they've used some sort of magic over here that everything just comes together very nicely. And I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of it is down to the fact of that uh, they've been using now more complex crossover networks and the Zobel network that they use for the dynamic driver obviously must then also be having a section of it which is complementing the BA and, and, and making the BA work in the way that it's working, which is, yes, it, it makes itself known, it's there, it's present, there isn't that seamless match that we sometimes get in some IEMs, however, uh, the way they've done it is very, very uh, uh, engaging, very fun, very satisfying, and, and, uh, and the thing that jumps to you straight away is there's loads and loads and loads of detail, okay? I would even go as far as saying that the, the Krille has got more details and more ability to to go and fetch those twinklies and sparklies, like I like calling, uh, than IEMs uh, sporting OnePlus 2 setups, uh, OnePlus 3 setups, and maybe even some OnePlus 4s. That's how much detail the Krille uh, is capable of doing. Um, as for the, the, the base, and we'll start with the base, it's using the latest generation XUN driver. Um, in the other settings, if not, which are not the one where the base is then in its maximum potential, I find that that matching, that coherence between the base, the middle and, and the mids and the trebs and the treble um, is, not a, 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 um, is not one which is conducive with uh, bringing out the most musicality Possible. It is one that, yes, will showcase details, it is one that will showcase technicalities, it is one that will be a, 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 a party for those that are really all into technicalities, but the musicality part of things becomes very second nature, and that's why I have left it in the full-on position, much like I've done on the DFI. The DFI uh, also has all the switches basically on. Um, uh, only one switch is not on, which doesn't really do anything which is uh, to the base anyway, uh, which is the fourth switch. Uh, but that's the position where the Zobel network doesn't cut uh, out so much base information and everything just comes across in a more harmonious manner. To that effect, the one that I actually preferred personally between the two DFIs is actually the non-switch version, which then actually has just a little bit more bass than the DFI with the switches on its maximum position. Uh, and if I have to be totally honest, the setting of bass over there is the one setting that I would have liked that to be made possible on, on actually the Krilla. If the Krilla had that extra bass setting, uh, I think the Krilla would really have knocked it out of the park 100%. Um, however, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure this is what's going to happen is this is the first time they're doing it at least in this manner and as is very much usually the situation with KZ, they bring out a first one to try out to see what the reaction is. If it's good, they will then bring out another one, improved, improved, improved. So I'm positive that we will be seeing now an onslaught of one plus one IEMs from them each one being an improvement over the previous one, much like I did as well with the with the single EDs. I mean, you've had, you know, the DFIs, the ZVXs, the EDXs. The, you've you've had so many, and all of them have been, uh, uh, um, you know, with have had one goal in which is going forward in trying to find the best possible one in terms of overall sound. Uh, and to that effect, yes, okay, the DFI with the switches has been the best one so far. Uh, it, it plays absolutely amazingly well, it's loads of detail, I mean it, it's got this Harman curve which has now become very much a, a common thing at all, um, KZ IEMs, be it the, these uh, budget single DDs or the, this one plus or budget, be it the single DDs, be it the, the Krilla, the OnePlus One, be it the Joy Audio, the, ZV, the ZV10, be it the, the, the AS24, they've all following this kind of 
um, uh, Harman tune, which is guaranteed to be something which pleases the majority of people. So in that aspect, I can't really criticize them. Uh, and honestly, I don't have anything against the Harman tune as well. Personally, I like it. Um, and this has been, uh, you know, this this evolution of the DDs will definitely come to the to the one plus ones. Uh, we will definitely see that. That, that also happened with, with the planars. They had a whole bunch of, you know, the PLAs and the PR ones and the PR one, uh, the, the hi fi and the normal version, or the hi fi and the balanced version, and then they had the the, the PR one Pro and then the PR two. So they've, they this is this this is common, so expected from KZ. This is not going to be the last one that we're going to be seeing of one plus ones. In terms then uh, of the base, as it is in this current uh, uh, version, it's fine. The, the base is not the the base is there to complement then the rest, okay? Yeah, but it's fine. It's got more than enough weight. You can notice that the driver is a high, you know, is a, is a reasonable high quality driver. It's not a, a basic driver. It plays well. The base is fast enough. It's, it doesn't linger, doesn't nothing. It's got good weight to notes, good definition. It handles a ton of power. It can handle a ton of power. Um, uh, what what more can I say? So it's got good texture. It's got you know good tonality, a good timbre. It, it sounds really nice. It sounds. It doesn't bleed into the mids uh, and and you know make muddy everything. No no, fantastic. In terms of the bass, amazing. In terms of the mids. Again, same situation. Everything is, has, in my opinion, and considering what this cost, which is under twenty dollars, been done in an exemplary manner. Perfect. There's nothing to be said against the mids. I mean, some of the songs that I like listening to to straight away see how the mids are done and instruments and everything uh, in the moment from Everett Harp. Um, I'll, I'll obviously uh, place the song in, in the playlist, but you know. The bass line, the the, the 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 sex, the the everything is done perfectly. Uh, it 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 has the right amount of energy associated with everything. Uh, it's got the, it's got a nice tonality and a nice timbre. Yes, it's colored. It, there's no denying it. It's a little bit accentuated. That's true, but it's nicely done. It's it's. Um, uh, it, it's nice enough for you to actually say, wow, you know, I actually am enjoying listening to this. Uh, it, it's not going to be perfect, okay? No, not going to be, but it's well done. And I've, like I've said countless times before, I have nothing against the set which is colored, absolutely nothing. If it's nicely done, go, you know, bring it on. I mean, what, what's the problem? Um, so perfect in that aspect. Male vocals, female vocals are very good. I personally feel uh, the uh, male vocals are the ones that are done in a way which is more along the way I like, um, and what I mean by that is uh, the female vocals, some of them can sound just a little bit too energetic, but I mean, not, nothing offensive, nothing aggressive. Uh, all I need is love from Tim Bowman and Stockley. I mean, the, the, the Krilla does it really nice. It's a really nice, uh, fun song to listen to and does it uh, amazing. Analog from Soul Persona as well, v very nice, uh, very, very nice. Um, treble uh, or upper mids and then treble um, plenty of energy loads of detail it's got a really nice wide sound stage it's wide it's tall it could be deeper it, but it's wide it's got a nice wide expansive sound uh, imaging is perfect i mean you listen to something like anabasis from uh, dead can dance and you know it, it pans left and right and positions everything very very nicely there's no no issues with with uh, with uh, with that. So imaging is fine. Detail retrieval, like I said, is, is spot on, perfect. Um, resolution as well, in my opinion, perfect. Um, just occasionally, occasionally, the treble gets a little bit, little bit strong. Uh, but you know what? I'm not even going to consider that a, a defect or bring that out as a negative aspect because I mean this is like seventeen dollars. You know, <laughs> let me put things into context for you so that you can understand of how good I actually think this is playing. This, this, for the price, plays as well as. A lot of the one plus ones and one plus twos that I have in my collection, priced at a hundred dollars. 
Um, if you guys follow me for a while, you know, for example, that I like very much the GS, uh, G, uh, the, uh, GS Audio, um, uh, the GD3 A, B, C, and D, that series. It's a OnePlus 2. For a long time, the, that OnePlus 2, the GD3 C, was actually uh, my my go-to recommendation of a OnePlus, uh, OnePlus 2 uh, IEM priced at about $100, um, much like the Olina was my rec for a single DD for a long, long time. And, you know, this, this actually uh, is, is, is better. And we're talking $100 of that IEM uh, versus just under $20 for this one. Uh, so, there, uh, I think I've said it all. Um, what about compared to the, you know, the, 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 the DFI, which is what I would say kind of serves as the basis for this. It is very evident that, uh, f you know, if you are able to abstract this yourself from the treble and the amount of treble that it has and upper mids that it has, it's very evident that the bass is kind of very similar. The way that the bass has been executed is very, very similar. Not so much with the, the, the DFI without the switches. The bass there has got more weight. That's the one setting, like I've said earlier, that I would have liked them to have included there to have that bass. That bass with these, with this energy that the mid, upper mids and treble have, it would have been oh my god, um, very evident in terms of the of the of the bass and, and the mids, and then in the upper mids and treble is then there's no there's no comparison. Uh, that it was it's very well done there. It's very well executed in the in the in the in the DFI. That that that's part of the spectrum. It, it's it's very smooth, very relaxed, much like the ZVX. Non aggressive, nothing. It's it's very very well done. Very un KZ like. Let's put it that way. Where usually they are a little bit bright and a little bit too forward, and you have that crazy five K peaks and so on and so forth. Amazing. Uh, actually, the, the the DFI with these wide board tips that I have here. The DFI with these BGVP whiteboard tips sounds insane. Okay, let me put it that way. It sounds insane. Period. Uh, the, the much like the ZVX as well with these whiteboard tips, it sounds insane. Um, but it, it's it's no contest for the Krilla. Uh, if ultimate detail, ultimate uh, twinklies and sparklies, ultimate technicalities is what you want, this surpasses the the the, the DFI and and the standard DFI. Okay, um, compare them to the others. Um, I'm going to start with the KB here, and, and this is going to be really easy. There's no comparison. Um, the Rose Finch in stock format is, uh, uh, I don't know, it's, it's got an insanely good dynamic driver, but it was just tuned wrong. And the, the retuned version, which is the one I've got here, that is nice. That is a nice, thick sounding IEM with loads of bass. And that's what it should have come out from factory, sounding like that. And if it had come out like that, sounding like that, it would have sold by the ton. And what I mean by that is the way that it's tuned there, it trades blows very in a very competent manner with things like the 7 Hertz Legato. Okay? In a very competent manner. Uh, but this was no comparison in stock format with the DFI, no comparison. And the pecker, which is the one that uh, then serves as the well, it serves as the basis for the pecker with the addition of the of the DD, is the same situation as as the the Rose Finch in stock format. And again, the pecker compared to the to the FI is it's not even a contest. It's 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 a, it's a, honestly it's a massacre. The only thing that the pecker does better is the bass. But then again, it's more down to the fact that the mids and upper mids and treble are not what they should be. And it's and the thing about the pecker even is which is even more of a of a pity is that they actually. Uh, positioned the the BA in the right position. They they didn't even put it on the on the uh, on the uh, nozzle. That it's uh, let me see. There you go. You see, it's actually positioned in the shell. So I, I don't understand. Anyway, uh, it's a pity. It's really a pity. I hope KB here will um, uh, will uh, uh, assess this and and retune it in a more capable manner. So that's out of the way. Um, as for the the TRN brethren. Uh, the TRN Pro in stock format was fine, it was okay. The Max, yes, is a definite improvement over the original, without a question. Uh, it is a, an improvement. The tuning switches add a lot of ability to fine-tune the bass and, and, and to a certain extent as well the mids and the highs. Um, but again, uh, the, the, the ST1 Pro <coughs> does bring that ability uh, of that extra 
detail that the, 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 the beer offers. And it is a better IM than uh, the, the Max. Um, both of these, I have actually got versions here which I have retuned. That's my ST1 Pro retuned. Uh, and the Max retuned. Both of these retuned can go up quite a bit in their performance and become more competent and something that I would have liked to have seen more what I've done than what is here. Having said that, again, let me just repeat, there's nothing wrong with these ones. The Max is good. However, the Max is not as good as the TXS. The TXS makes more sense. They tuned in a similar manner, but this has been done in a better way, a little less peaky, no no peakiness, especially in that you know, 2, 2.5, then 4, 5, 4, 5, 5K area. The TXS is better. So there's straight away. Compared to the DFI, the same situation. The DFI is a better IEM as well, be it the non-switch or the switch version. So it loses out to these two because of that. The ST1, the same situation. ST1 is probably the best uh, uh, budget TRN that they've had up to now, and I said that in my review without a question. Uh, but it, it isn't as it's not in the base. In the base, I would even say it's superior to the base of the of the Krilla. Yes, it is. Um, but again, it, the reason, main reason for that is that it doesn't have then the mids, upper mids, and treble that the Krilla has. Uh, in that aspect, especially the upper mids and treble of the Krilla are phenomenal phenomenal i mean compared to the st1 pro phenomenal what then is the difference between them you you these two you ask well here the ba is being try, they've tried to tune the ba in a way which is more seamless it's more relaxed it's not as you know as 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 vivid as <coughs> as intense while here they they just you know they uh like a fellow reviewer said and i like the way that he mentioned was they, they, they came they stumbled upon something interesting they stumbled upon something which was you know uh, quite uh, quite good to explore and then instead of just turning it up just the right amount they've turned it up all the way uh, and that's exactly the, the what then separates these two when you listen to them to back to back and again uh, using uh, some of the songs uh, like I've mentioned in the moment from Everett Harp or All I Need Is Love from Tim Bowman Analog from Soul Persona uh, Dreamcatcher by uh, Billy McLaughlin A Taste of Honey by Patricia Barber by Patricia, Patricia uh, Barber sorry um, both of them do it really nice I mean they play it really nice but the Krilla edges out the ST1 by being just that extra little bit detailed there. Okay, it's a little bit more colored. You you could argue that this one is then more realistic, more true. Uh, it's got a more a more realistic timbre and tonality. That's all. Those are all valid arguments. But I have the feeling that most people will gravitate towards this because the amount of detail, the amount of openness that this has is just uh, crazy. I mean, it's really crazy. And then finally on this corner, and I'm not wanting to, to spoil too much, what I'm going to say is that for me, uh, after uh, you know, having heard these four more budget-orientated um, OnePlus Ones, uh, th this one, the Nami, is the only one that I think that can trade s uh, some solid blows with, um, with the... Um, with the Krilla, it's got a different tuning approach. It's got a tuning approach which is come, which goes along the lines of what we found already in the May, and in a, in a, and in an upcoming IEM as well that they they will be having a one plus four called the Freedom. It's got that tuning philosophy, um, which means then there's an earlier pin again, and then a drop, uh, creating a slight dip there anywhere between two and three three and a half k, and then a rise again. They, they, it's it's the kind of the the CVJ signature. Let's put it that way, all right? Um, but somehow all of that just comes together very very nicely. And um, what you do notice when you listen to both of them, and again I don't want to say too much, is that yes, the bass here is superior. It's a fuller bass. It's got a little bit more. It's got the bass that this probably should have had. It's got a bass which is more reminiscent of the the DFI, the non-switch version. Okay, uh, the mids, it's not that the mids are worse or better, it's just a different way of doing mids. I like them both. And then in the upper mids and treble is where you then see, uh, again, some differences. Um, there are instances where 
the 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 upper mids and treble of the krila are superior there are instances where these one the, the ones on the nami are superior so it will be very much a give and take over here all right uh, and that's it uh, I, I don't want to speak too much about it like i said because I, I will be reviewing this in more detail um so yeah what 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 can i then say in summary with regards to the krila a thumbs up i mean um, uh, really uh, honestly uh, there, there there's not there's there isn't much i can say against it because it is a well built uh i am it's well tuned uh, you know um, the only like real detail here that i would have liked it's not even the bringing down of the treble or the or the timing of the treble no just if it had a switch to give it just a little extra bass i think that would have been enough to then fetch that balance that we talk about between bass mids upper mids and treble and it would have made it exemplary but i'm sure uh, it's a question of one week two weeks three weeks we will have something along those lines uh, and that's it guys um, i'll show you another graphs and we'll wrap it up all right take care hi guys and welcome now to the graph section for the uh, kz krilla uh well let me just get all of this out of the way here yes, so we don't get us all confused all right um this is the graph of uh my krilla, uh in the settings that i'm uh, already mentioned which is all the settings in the, in the 111 position and for the sake of comparison let me just put you the dfi uh, also with uh, the the settings that I usually listen to on my DFI which is this one here okay and let me just align them and that's that okay so those are two aligned um, actually let me make the, the DFI in red so it stands out so you can see it better uh, as you can see, it's not the difference in the bass or in the mids. It, the difference then starts appearing in the upper mids um, and in the treble um, and in the extension past 10k. Uh, and although you would uh, think that, oh, okay, but uh, it seems like the DFI has got a little bit more there between uh, you know 2 and 2 and, and, and 6k, the reality is no. Um, the way that uh, that that BA interacts with the the, the, the dynamic driver. Uh, it, it it this whole area here sounds significantly more open, more detailed, more everything. Okay, nothing wrong with the DFI, mind you. Absolutely nothing wrong with the DFI. Uh, the only thing, like I mentioned, the only thing I would have liked to have seen on the DFI is what I'm going to show you now, which is the non-switch DFI. Okay, they aligned, which as you can see, basically the same as the switch version. Nothing, no, no, no big difference there. It's basically the same thing. It's just that little extra, almost two dB is there, which believe me, it's it's you notice it. You can you can hear the difference between the the non-switch DFI and the DFI. You notice it, and I would have liked to have had that as a setting on the Krilla. Okay, but anyway, look. It is what it is. That's the Krilla there. Um, nice bass, sub bass focus, although, you know, uh, um, that doesn't mean it's a bass monster. No, but it's got nice weight. It, 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 will, it will play back EDM tracks nicely. No bleeding to the mids. I mean, everything is just, as you can see, almost flat. It's perfect, nice, relaxed pin again. Picks it close to 3K. V I mean, really, really well done. This is a really nicely done tune. Okay, next one I'm going to show you now is uh, the, uh, 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 okay, Krilla, Krilla, let me show you now the TRNs, the ST1 Pro, uh, okay, 15 and 16, all right, that's the ST1 Pro in the setting that I used the most and I used the, and that I like the most, which is the 110 setting. And this is the ST1 Pro in the uh, all uh, switches on position. Uh, in this in this setting, the ST1 Pro just sounds overwhelmingly overwhelmingly thick, and it's not really the setting that I enjoyed listening. So we're gonna just take that out completely. I'm gonna leave it with the setting that I listened to it the most. And um, 
it's not, you know the 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 the, the interesting thing here yeah, is uh, uh, the reason why uh, having this extra mid bass energy here it makes then the mid the, the the ba sorry sound more relaxed not as intense and that's why i said that when you listen to it yes you notice that there's more bass presence in the st1 pro and that the ba sounds more uh, apparently more coherently matched more tamed more relaxed and and that's just basically down really to the fact that you have more mid bass here and yes there will probably be a slight tuning adjustment um, if I look at, or if I listen to a song, then that has uh, not got this much energy to be showcased on it, like something like more vocal, female, or so on, the the Krilla absolutely then shows its colors, and and it is more detailed by uh, m way more detailed. This year does not really reflect the reality. I mean, um, uh, the, the the green. Actually, let me change the color yet so you guys can even see it better. Uh, let me put it in red again. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, you know the, the 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 what you think that you, oh no, it's not going to be much. No, there, there is. Trust me, there is. Okay. Anyway, that's that there out of the way. Um, let me show you the 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 pecker straight away now because I mean honestly, uh, that's the pecker. Um, again. I, I don't understand this whole area here past 10k. I don't, uh, I'm, and and this is not me not doing the measurement properly. No, I tried a whole bunch of measurements. Different, it always comes out like this. Uh, it's just this overwhelming amount of mid bass that's there, which doesn't make sense. That then just camouflages completely this whole area here of the uh, mids, upper mids, and treble, and. You know, when you look at it by itself, you wouldn't think that there would be a big difference, but it, it's just too much, uh, and it just makes no sense. The 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 the, the picker makes no sense. So I'm even gonna just remove it once and for all, and that's it. Um, okay, we can also take away the DFI non switch, the DFI switch, uh, the raw switch. We can take it away. We don't need that as well. Don't need that. ST1 Pro, uh, as I said, yes, there we go. Uh, and now the last one is uh, the um, the Nami. Uh, and before I actually show the Nami, uh, I just want to show you here quickly the um, the CBJ, the TXS, the single, uh, the single DD that they have, which uh, is very good. And the single DD, the the, the TXS compared with the with the um, with the uh, Krilla actually uh, is is pretty impressive. Um, it's a little bit more mid bass energy, which is noticeable. It's a little bit more fuller, uh, okay, definitely. And then yes, although it seems like it's gonna kind of keep up with the the mids and the upper mids and treble of the of the of the Krilla, because I mean you look at the the, the, the amount of energy that the, the TXS has over here in this five, six, seven K area and even the extension past 10K, when you listen to it, no it doesn't. It's it's the one that it's a single DD that actually keeps up the best with the Krilla to be honest, but it doesn't have. I just thought it'd be interesting to show this. And now finally then the uh, then the, the CVJ the new one that, that will be launched. I'm just gonna show you quickly this graph. Um, as I mentioned, that typical CVJ style of tuning on the mids, upper mids and treble with a little bit of a dip here between two and three. Uh, again, another dip here to take away any possible sibilance, which doesn't exist. Good extension past 10K. That's a couple of related peak. It should be a little bit closer to eight. And then some mid bass energy here as well. Uh, this for me is the only one that really, really uh, makes more not makes more sense sorry makes sense as an alternative to the Krilla uh, and mainly because it's a different style of tuning altogether but it's been very well done very well executed and when I do the, the more detailed review on it you will uh, you will see what I mean all right anyway guys hope you enjoyed this review as always like and subscribe click you know not click smash that button there uh, and any questions you might have please feel free to ask me all right you take care now bye bye